I'm Andrea Markheim with Flyover Brewing Company in Scotts Bluff. We are a microbrewery slash brew pub and we brew all of our beer on site here. Kind of started several years ago, my husband was a home brewer, just really um, was working on his craft, putting out some really good beer and just the word got out like, hey, it'd be fun to have a brewery here in town. Our partner, Peter Meyer, um, they work together outside of this. He said, you know, we should open a brewery. And at first we thought it was kind of crazy because they both had full-time jobs. And so um, just that went on for probably six months to a year. And then Joe brought it home and said, you know, we should open a brewery. Like, what do you think about this? Being that they were both doctors, they didn't really have the experience necessary to open something like this. But um, I have a background in restaurants and event planning and catering. And so they felt like it could work since I have that background. So we just started talking and, you know, considered whether Joe could be the brewer or we needed to hire that out. I really felt like we needed to go professional on that level A um, because he already has a full-time job B just to really get the uh, level of product that we wanted here. Um, so we started to search for the brewer, we started to search for property, um, we brought on several consultants, um, started working with the uh, Siebel Institute out of Chicago for, for the brewing end of things, training program, certification program, and so we worked with the Nebraska Business Development Center and I worked with Ingrid who was a godsend and Margaret um, to, to work on the business end of things, numbers, staffing, budget, construction budget, all of those things. Ingrid is She's lovely, but she is just, she is tough. And you know, telling us like, that's not gonna work, or that's not gonna cut it, or this is what you need. Just like you need someone who will be no holds barred and give it to you straight, because like you have to go into this very realistically. You know, it's, there's a dream to it, yes, but like you have to have the, real, the realism aspect to it. So someone like her that can talk numbers with you and set you straight. Uh, we worked with Star Leal with the City of Scotts Bluff and the LB840 committee. And I mean, it's so great if you have people behind you that want growth um, and whatever your industry is going to be. Um, get those people behind you because they'll champion for you. During the planning process, it's funny that we're now basically a full-scale restaurant to some people because I never wanted to run a restaurant. <laughs> we try really hard to maintain our brewery identity but um, in developing the brewery aspect, we really felt like food was an important element. In some cities, they can get away with food trucks or not having food at all or having a popcorn machine, but just really felt that in Scott's Bluff, um, a food option to keep people here um, and have them order that second beer and what have you. So we um, felt like we needed to put in the kitchen. Everything is scratch, our dough is scratch, all of our appetizers are scratch desserts. And so when we first opened, we had comment cards that we gave every table, because there's always something that you miss, you don't see, um, want, their, want customer feedback, did it for months. Um, and you know, we'd get feedback like, oh, you should serve hamburgers, or you know, all these different little things. I'm like, that's not who we are. And so we just stuck to our guns in the beginning, and we're never gonna have fries, I don't have a fryer. Everything is fresh out of that beautiful wood-fired oven. And so we just feel like it's unique about our space is we've created a pretty um, urban setting and experience in a rural area. One thing that Joe said, he's like, this would be fun for you. Like you can design. I'm always like trying to like do a project at home. So like that part was really fun for me because um, that's part of my background. And so I love the booths and I love the trim, you know? And so like I searched for like a month to find those on Etsy and I like had a lady build them. And so it's just like all the little details and that's what I love. And that's when, when people appreciate my napkin selection, which Joe thought I was crazy. He's like, you're spending how much on napkins? And he tells me, oh, he's like, someone else mentioned your napkins. I'm telling you, it's all part of the experience. The design aspect, I would say, is the part I enjoy the most. Um, I'm still, I'm always involved in the menu planning still. I, I like food, you know, I fancy myself a foodie. And so um, bringing ideas to the menu is fun too, working with the kitchen on that. But. I don't want to become just a full service restaurant that happens to serve beer. Like we're here, we're brewing the beer on site. Like that is such a beautiful, unique thing. And so want to make sure it stays about that. Lots of time, lots of time preparing, researching. Um, at the same time, we were looking for property. It was probably just over a year from when we first started the conversation to when we closed on this building so much to consider between, you know, even me, have, I have restaurant experience, but I've never built a kitchen. And so like, just learning all about that thing, you know, so there's just, even though you think you know something, there's so much more that you don't know about. 
one thing that I would probably have done differently um, during maybe our planning and building process was bringing in a, like a kitchen expert um, for the design and the layout. Um, again, we didn't really think it was going to have the usage that it does, but it definitely could have been um, built more efficiently. For example, a walk-in refrigerator. I mean, like. And so now we just have a couple reach-ins and they're always in max capacity and it's always an issue of juggling, rotating food. There's always something that you wish you would have done differently, but I definitely wish that um, the kitchen was built more efficiently. So our structure, kind of from the top, uh, is myself and my husband Joe and our partner Peter. Peter's uh, mostly a silent partner. I oversee the daily operations, um, staffing, payroll, billing, invoices, things like that, just from an office um, oversight standpoint. Uh, Joe, he mostly does the legal side of things, licensure, um, working with the TTB and the Liquor Commission. Um, together he and I do the label design and the artwork, uh, he does the can orders, things like that. Tara, our GM, just manages all of the daily operations, staffing, scheduling, the kitchen, she's a godsend. And so it's so important to find the right people. Um, that's a huge part of the growing pains in the beginning, you know, every, you know, there's always some changeover and go through a few people before you find the right fit or, you know, take the time to find the right person before you make the commitment. And then the other thing is to freely admit your faults or your lackings and hire that. Um, because you can't do everything. Like if I, in all of my end of things, if I was supposed to do all of like the legal work and that Joe is doing and he knows like the, the brewery and the regulations, like if I had to do that too, I don't think I could handle both. And so like you have to find that person that offsets um, your personal gaps and your personal shortcomings because we all have them. So um, we had not planned to really distribute, maybe a little bit regionally, but we always felt like Scott's Bluff is small enough you can come here and buy our cans. But after a year and a half probably, we really felt like we had kind of captured our market share here. And so now we're in probably 20 accounts throughout the state and on the east side of the state. Um, we found a, a distributor who's actually locally based, um, but, but he focuses on like boutique wines and small batch vineyards, things like that, and really go, goes into some higher end accounts. So we really felt like those would be the type of accounts that we would want to be in. The thing, you always have to be ready to evolve or reinvest. You know, there's always those opportunities that like, well, if I, if I reinvest, we can do this better or whatever it might be. And so um, we do live music the first Sunday of every month called our, our uh, monthly music series. We bring in comedy from the Denver Fort Collins area and we have them come monthly and we sell out every time. One time we accidentally scheduled on a Husker football game. So that was the only time we didn't sell out. But otherwise, the house is packed. Um, we sell out every time. It's so fun and people love. It's just another option here. Um, on top of you know dining or the beer, it's just another um, entertainment option. From the funding side of things, uh, it's quite the mix kind of to put together the whole package. The brewing side of it qualifies as manufacturing. And so the LBA40 is focused on manufacturing jobs. And so that portion of it, we were able to get um, funding for and for um, the job creation for our head brewer. We were able to get um, bank loans through Platte Valley Bank. They were great to work with. We did personal investment too, obviously, from um, our family and from our partner, Peter. See, we opened at the end of August. And so, unfortunately, like we were just kind of getting rolling when winter came. And uh, the restaurant business always falls off in the winter. And so we hadn't kind of established our place in people's minds as like, oh, let's go there. That's our favorite or whatever, you know? So we weren't, um, we didn't have our footing yet. So we did still have to put in um, money through the winter months just for regular cash flow and make payroll, you know? And so whole winter that we kept putting money in and we're like, oh my gosh. Like, so there, there are these points where you're like, another month, another month, and then, and then it'll come out of it. You know, fast forward a year, and our second winter, we did not have to. So I think it just give, it gave us more time to, like I said, get into people's mindsets, became part of their regular habits, um, built up lunch service, things like that. So we were able to um, cash flow through the second winter. 
So there will be, whether it's your your first winter or whatever that season is for you in your business, there will be a moment where you think like, oh my gosh, how much longer? And then, and then it'll click and it'll come together and you can make that leap and it'll just make sense. It, it might be painful for a bit, but it'll make sense. One of the hardest parts, honestly, of being a small business owner is time management because it feels like there's always something to do. You don't clock out at the end of the day and go home. You take it home with you. And so that is something you really have to work on from a personal span standpoint to see how it fits into your life. But it was really important to me to balance um, family life with this. Um, so Joe still works full time. He's, so he's basically gone every other week working and so he and then he comes home needs a couple days to try to recuperate but then he's just right back at it with the work um, from the brewery and so I'm always balancing kids and school runs and working from home uh, so it is tough it is tough but you have to and we're still working on it but you have to be able to turn it off go have a dinner with your husband or your spouse that does not involve work conversation you know you have to turn it off sometimes otherwise it feels like you're never gonna get a break It has to be something you're passionate about because there will be a phase, whether it's the winter that sales aren't coming in or it's the two months before you open, like it's hard. And like it has to be something that you love that you still believe in enough to get through that. Because like if this is like if this is something that you're building from scratch and you want to be your own, then it's you don't it's not supposed to be just like a daily job. And so if you don't want to be a job, like you have to love it enough to get through the hard parts.